Hello friends and well-wishers, it's Atlas here. Um, I have for you a darkness deck profile, because I, I did the Bladewing one last time. And, uh, you know, darkness is another deck you can build with DIs. Um, it's a lot cheaper, but I'll, I'll just be honest, it's strictly worse than Bladewings. That's all I'm going to say. That said, it is really fun. So let's get started. For a starter, we have Drain Singular. So his skill is Forerunner. He's also got Darkness. Uh, when he boosts, uh, he gets two Cancel into battle, so he's a 70 booster. That's pretty cool. But the important still is when your G unit strides, put this unit and all greater one greater units into your soul and draw two cards. So the cool thing about this is you can put down things like Were Tiger Jaeger and uh, Dimension Creeper and just generally be aggressive and then on your, on your stride turn you put that all in your soul draw two cards and then you can do other stuff um so this is like arguably better in the darkness deck it's also got merit in blade wings um i still still run ordinaz but i just you know terrain singular definitely shines more in here than it does over there four copies of one of scatter sin sure hot so his skill is uh, when you, when your G unit strides, you can soul charge two, and then if you have four cards with the darkness ability in your soul, your opponent picks a rear guard and retires it. So that's free. Um, on top of that, if you rode normally, most likely you're going to have two darkness cards in soul because most of your grade one and or most of your cards in general are with darkness. So normally that would have to be you would have to soul charge two darkness cards like perfectly, but. Since Deranged Singular has Darkness, and both things happen at the same time, you can do Deranged first, then Soul Charge, and at the minimum, you would just need to hit one. So it's a lot easier to do that first stride. Um, his other skill, and the important one, is both Vanguard and Rearguard, GUB2, Darkness. Uh, when he attacks, if the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, he gets plus 5k shield, and your opponent can't draw with zeros. So this is Silent Tom done right, or Doppel Vampire done right. Uh... This is basically your win condition, is doing Blader Mouse and buffing this guy up really big. Uh, he, so running four of him is kind of important because he works, he shines both on Vanguard and Rearguard. So, next up, three copies of Glens and Vampire. Now, I see a lot of people put a lot of weight on this guy, and uh, his... All right, uh, he, he's a really good card, and he works both on Van and Rear Guard, which is something that the, the Darkness deck that a lot of other decks don't have, which is both of your grade 3s work well on both Vanguard and Rear Guard Circle. So that's definitely a unique trait of the deck. Uh, his skill is GB1 Darkness. Uh, choose a card with the Darkness ability from your hand or uh, Rear Guard, put it into your soul. At the end of the turn, if the number of cards in your soul is 6 or more, you may pay the cost. If you do, uh, draw a card... And then, if the number of cards in your soul is 15 or more after you do that, you counter charge, pick a rear guard, and retire it. Opponent's rear guard and retire it. So, um, this is pretty cool. Like, a lot of people use this with Enigmatic Assassin, because you can pop it out during your turn and then suck it back up. Uh, it's also, because it's end of the turn, this happens after you stride. So, it's not like, a, oh, I gotta, I gotta not stride for the turn. No, you can do it there, too. Um, the reason... I have him at three, is I would rather see Sharhat more than I see him in in every single... Like, riding Sharhat is still a good thing. Calling him is less good, because his other still is uh, on call, counter blast one. Check top five, look for any number of cards of the darkness ability and put them into your soul and put the rest on the bottom of the deck. And he gets 1k for everything you put in there. Um, realistically, it's about one or two cards, because, you know, you don't want to put everything away unless it's really early game um i'll do i'll be honest i'm not running any enigmatic assassin in here because your win condition is blader mouse where you just kind of put him away anyway um so yeah that's why glenson's at three if you're gonna run a build with assassin cut char hot down to three and up glenson to four because he's more important to be on in that case uh, Gritus, four copies of Covetous Succubus. Alright, so she's got Darkness, uh, GV1, on call, uh, Counter Blast, if you got six or more, Soul Charge, then if you got ten or more, uh, 
I mean, sorry, six or more is the counter charge, then ten or more is draw two, drop a card. So this helps you filter through your deck. Um, because we're not doing, you, you don't use Demigod, Flying Librarian is kind of clunky. Um, and you also don't have to, like, speed your way up to 15 or more. You can just kind of, like, go at your own leisure. So I found her to be more helpful as a great two. Um, four copies of Demented, Demonted Executioner. So, if you remember from the Bladewing video, uh, so Darkness, you can counter blast. If you got six or more in slowly, he gets, uh, 2k, and then if you have 10 or more, he gets another 3k. The important thing is when he's placed under, you can look at seven cards in the top of the deck and put put one of the darkness ability into your soul. So, uh, you can put, um, where Tiger Yeager in there, you can put your, one of your PGs in there, which we'll get to in a bit. You can also put a grade three into the soul, which is actually kind of important because your first stride does something cool with that. So you'll see in a bit. Um, two copies of Tragic Claw. So... Uh, when something is placed in the same column as it, Vanguard or Rearguard, you can Soul Charge. And then the other skill is uh, Darkness, when someone's put in the same column. If uh, you have 10 or more in Soul, it gets Boost, and then if you have 15 or more, it gets 2k. So, uh, this is kind of fun if, like, let's say you have the cat in hand, like the the chim, the kitty, and put it in front of Tragic Claw, you get a Soul Charge, then you can do Cat's thing, put it back, Soul Charge, draw a card on Flippin' Damage. And then if you have 10 or more while you're doing that, you know, Tragic Claw to boost for the turn, and it's a good card both in early and late game. Um, I gotta say that, like, the grade 2 lineup is a lot more flexible in here than it is in, uh, what's it called? In Blade Winds. So, if you want to not use her, uh, you can also try this if you want to do a more Shar Hot heavy build. You have Brennan Vampire. So, his still is Darkness GB1 when he attacks a Vanguard. If you have a Vanguard with Sharhat in the name, you can counter blast one and then he gets 1k for every card in soul. And then at the end of the battle, you draw a card and put him into your soul. So the, the sweet spot there is 12 because then he's a 21k attacker on his own. Um, obviously that's not always going to happen, but I think on average it's anywhere between 12 and 15 by the time he shows up. Uh, if you happen to have written Glenzen, you can also do this on your Sharhat stride turn, like, one who uh, steeped in sin, not scattered sh sin, Sharhat. So, you know, because uh, the Sharhat stride sucks up your whole field, you can attack with this first, get a draw off it, and then he goes into your soul anyway. What do you care? Um, I have him as a tech just because you, you know, there are times when you ride Glen uh, Glenn's and Vampire. Uh, I think he's fun to play around with. If you don't like him, fucking add another Tragic Claw or whatever else you want to put in there. Um... Yeah, if you also want to run a more Sharhat focus build, you can cut Glenzen uh, Glen for the old Sharhat, and his benefit there is that you can double dip on uh, the retire still when you do Blader Mouse because it restands, but I find just Glenzen and new Sharhat to be more consistent. Um, all right, on to the great ones. We have three copies of the Depeche Mode groupie that is Closet Balloon. So his skill is uh, when you... You know, when you guard with, you know, the PG still, and then when after you discard, if you have 10 or more cards in soul and there's a copy of him in there, which 9 times out of 10 there will be, you draw a card, so it's free. And then also one copy of Succubus of Avarice. So if you remember from the Blade Wing video, GB1 Darkness, you sack off a grade 1 or lower rear guard and pull her to your hand from the soul. So uh, some I ran for Plaza Balloon for a while, but it is kind of nice to uh, be able to you know, get, th get something at, at a moment's notice, and because it's dark DIs and you soul charge so much, it, like, you will get a copy in there. It's surprisingly not hard to do. Um, people are wondering why not just run four Avarice. Well, I will show you in a minute. So, moving on. Four copies of Where Tiger Jaeger. Uh, this card is still broken. <laughs> um, so when he's putting your soul during your turn, you can counterblast one and draw a card. Uh, this is pretty much half your draw engine, which is fine, because that's okay. Uh, the other still is uh, Darkness in your soul. You can counterblast one, drop a card. If you have six or more in soul, after you do that, you soul charge. And if you have ten or more, you pull them to your hand. And then the last still is if you have two or more cards with Darkness ability, you will. Uh, he's a Stride Fodder. So this is your Stride Fodder along with one copy of the original Stride Fodder, because... Um, well, one, it's a stride deck, but two, you can use this to search for the Sharhat Grade 3, which means you can use it on, like, your 
try to win turns. So that is a total of 12 cards you can use to stride with, you know, if you count all the grade threes in this. So you're pretty much set. Four copies of Dimension Creeper. So uh, because you can, like, yes, you can't do the Soul Clone thing with Lightning Sullivan, but what you can do is if you draw a bunch of these early, you can plunk them down, and then on your stride turn, you just shove them all in with the ring singular, draw two cards, and then you get a bunch of Soul Charge fun. Um, I see a lot of people, or not a lot of people. One of my friends doesn't like it because uh, you he wants other stuff you can do with Darkness, which I kind of understand, but I find it like if you're in, a, in an emergency need of Darkness, then this is kind of important because, you know, that's assuming you didn't ride Charhat because Charhat grade 3 instantly gives you Darkness for the turn. Um, two copies of Listed Vampire. So Listed Vampire is uh, GB1, you pick a card from your hand, shove it in your soul, then uh, if you got a card of the darkness ability, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose a normal unit from your soul and put it in your hand. So that's why you can run Closet Balloon with this. Both of your grade threes have darkness, which means that you can, like, oh, I'm holding this Dimension Creeper, I'm going to shove it in soul and get a Closet Balloon out. Cool. And then Closet Balloon's basically free, so it... You know, it, it's a good card. You can also, if you don't like Dimension Creeper, you can drop those down to two, add these two. Um, there's also a card called Com Combust Vampire, where if you rest it. If you got six or more in soul, you soul charge, and then give something 5k. Um, or sorry, you soul charge, then if you have six or more, give something 5k. So a lot of people in Darkness will use that with uh, Succubus of Avarice, because you can give something a boost and then pop it and get your Avarice back. So, uh, Darkness just has a lot of options that you can play with, which is kind of half the fun of the deck, I think. Um, it's also fairly cheap because you don't have to buy, like, $30 Blade Wing Tibbles. So, it's life. Four copies of the uh, Fire's Collection Heal Trigger. Um, you know, it's a heal with an effect strictly better than other heals with no effect, uh, which is when you get the, the G-Guard with his name, you can put it into your soul. Um, four copies of Dark Knight of Nightmare Land. Um, so, oh, and then two copies of One Night Succubus. So, uh, Dark Knight is, is the Mardal clone. You shove it in soul, give 3k somewhere. And then, uh, One Night Succubus is when Charhat attacks, you shove it in soul, draw a card, give 5k somewhere. It's the Heart Thumb clone. Um, be again, because you run not all Charhats, uh, Dark Knight has utility in more situations than One Night Succubus does. Um, in all cases, it's another crit with an effect, basically. Uh, if you don't want to buy One-Eyed Succubus, just run more vanilla crits. It's fine. Um, or also, the, there's the, the Nightmare Land crit, which uh, it doesn't have the effect aside from shoving it in soul, so if you, you really need darkness, you can run that instead of this. Um, yeah, six crit and six stand. So the first stand is the Chim, the kitty. Um, so, GB1, you put it back in deck, you shuffle, soul charge, if you have six or more, you, uh, unflip a damage, then if it's ten or more, you draw a card. So, this is your unflip engine in pretty much every Dark Regulars deck. This is going to be important for a long time. Um, it's common, hopefully it's not too hard to find. Two copies of Warkatsa Recruits. Um, so he's darkness, the number of your soul, uh, cards in your soul is ten or more. He gets 5k power, 5k shield, and then also when you, the attack did not hit, you may put this in, unit into your soul. Please note that the putting it into your soul still is not GB restricted. It's not based on the number of cards in your soul. You can just do it. Um, that other still where he gets the 5k power, 5k shield is a lot easier to proc on the opponent's turn in this deck than it is in Blade Wings. Um, because you have Listic Vampire, because you have G Guards, which Blade Wing did have, but you also have Listic Vampire. And then also, like, one can proc the other. So you guard with the first one, it goes in the soul, and then the second one's your 15k shield. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, let's see. Onto the G deck, you got... One copy of Sorrowful Slice Lujarius. So, uh, Counterblast 1, choose a card from your G zone, flip it face up, so Sea Breeze probably. Soul Charge 3. For each different grade among the cards you soul charged, to choose one of your rear guards that gets plus 5k till end of the turn. If a card with the darkness ability was soul charged by this effect, so unless you get like three heals or something, 
choose up to one grade three card from your soul and put it into your hand. So this is a really good first stride in that you can make your field kind of huge, and then also um, you can pull a, like you can pull a stride fodder for next turn. You can pull a, a Charhat to call. So he's a 16k no zeros. It's pretty solid. It's not you know demagogue seven attack solid, but it's solid. Um, one sea breeze. It's a G deck. So. Also your flip target. Uh, one copy of uh, Rebellious Retainer of Fresh Blood Frederick. So, I'll be honest, this guy is just kind of a filler. Um, we have a weird number of cards to use. Like, you can't really run a second Lejarius because he, he doesn't have a flip target after that unless you want to start flipping G-guards or something. So, um, until DI gets, like, a better strike, you can run, like... Eritreus, the on attack Soul Church 2 guy, but like it does not matter. So his skill is you choose a card from your hand, shove it in soul, he gets 1k for every card in your soul till end of turn. And then if he got 10,000 or greater at, uh, by this effect, all the rear guards in your front row get plus 5k. So um, it, it is kind of neat because like you can shove a Dimension Creeper in there, you can shove a Wear Tiger in there and then draw a card. Like it's. It's whatever, it's not amazing. Um, you're probably not going to be using it often, but. All right, four copies of Blader Mouse. So this is the only way to recycle it in uh, Darkness, so you need this. As well, uh, he is your win condition. So his skill is uh, GB2, Darkness, Counterblast, flip a card of him, or copy of him. Choose two cards from your hand, put them into your soul. So when he attacks, if the number of your cards in your soul is 10 or more, you may pay the cost, so probably. Um, if you do, choose all Return all grade zero units from your rear guard and soul to your deck. Shuffle your deck. Choose one of your units, or two of your units. They get plus 5k until the end of the turn. And then at the end of the battle, stand him. You just drive minus two. So typically what's going to happen is it's going to be him and then a Sharhat grade three on one of the sides. So you go, all right, steal to him and Sharhat. Uh, you know, it's 31. They guard or don't guard. You do the triple drive. Put all your triggers on the Sharhat. And then Sharhat's hitting for... At the very minimum, 21k, no zeros. So it's very, very good. Um, a friend of mine will say, like, if he's got a full board on both sides, he'll do it on both of his rear guards, which that's definitely got some merit to it. Um, I, depending on what, what I know, what's in, depending on what I know is in my opponent's hand, it makes more sense to um, do it on him just because you put more pressure. But if you see they'd like, like they grabbed an Ezras back from drop zone. No, don't fucking put it on him because they're just gonna PG it anyway. Let's see, one copy of one who steeped in sin sure hot. So, GB two darkness. So when he attacks, he counterblast one. Put all your rear guards in your soul. He gets ten k power. If you have ten or more after you do that, you blow up your opponent's board. And then if you have fifteen or more, your opponent can't draw with sentinels. So the important thing is that you can use this to board wipe, which, depending on what you're playing against, can be really, really painful. So, like, if you're playing against, I don't know, like, my friend's Revelation, you can blow up his hard-earned board like that. You can, you know, if you're going up against Luard, you can screw them up like that, etc. Um, you don't need more than one, though, because you just don't. Two copies of Gilderoy. Um, <clears throat> so his skill is, once per turn, flip a copy of him. Uh, if number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, he gets plus 10k. If it's 15 or more, he gets a point can't draw a green one or higher. And then if number of cards in face up in G zone is two or more, he gets a crit. So, um, this is another way you can win. Uh, let's say you, you know, you got counter blast deprived. This is free. So you can do all your, you know, still put pressure on the opponent without having to fucking just go into vanilla blade or mouse or something. Um, it is a fairly expensive card. If you want to do, if you want to do a budget version, you can throw in Lejarius and another random stride. Um, I do recommend you to have two though, just because he's still a good card. He's not the like powerhouse he used to be, but um, he, he's still pretty good. Let's see, one copy of the debate. So you're probably not getting that late, but sometimes things happen. So. Uh, all the units in your front row get plus 10k and a or 13k and a crit for every 13 cards in your soul. I get it. It's because DIs are unlucky and demons Friday the 13th or whatever. Ironically, I'm actually recording this on Friday the 13th. Um, so he's, he's whatever. It's just like 
you know, sometimes you, the, the, the opponent won't die. And we have to kill him, all right? Um, one copy of uh, Vincent. So GB1, uh, you flip up a Guardian when you dart with him. You may pay the cost. If you do, soul charge, and this unit gets plus 5k for every 5 cards in your soul. Um, because the heal puts himself in soul also, that's a net 2 cards to the soul. Um, so this is just like a big shield for basically free. It's probably going to be like, alright, flip something, 41k. Um, very good. Very good G-Guard. Uh, one copy of Nighttime Gentleman Saint Germain. Uh, so when you guard with him, if the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, he gets 10k shield. If it's 15 or more, you can choose any number of cards on your van, rear, or guard circle, and they get resist. So, uh, this is basically a free 10k shield. But the other cool thing is if you're playing against, like, Deep Robos, right? You, because guards get thrown down one at a time, you can throw down all of your guards and then do him last. Then pick all of your guardians and give them resist so they can't guard break you. It's a really specific combo, but it's really funny to me. Um, two copies of... Odd bot Malat. So, Soul Charge 2, if you got 6 or more after you do that, plus 5k shield. Pretty simple. Uh, it's still a good card. Um, and then last and it, lastly, one Sabnak. Um, so, when your Vanguard attacks your Vanguard, you can Counter Blast 1, he gets 5k shield, and your Vanguard gets plus 5k power to lend turn. So, your 16k base. Um, pretty damn good. Uh, that being said, like, you don't want to be as aggressive with your Counter Blast as you were in Blade Wings, so you don't really need more than one of him. Alrighty, so that was the whole deck list. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It is a way to play it without Enigmatic Assassin, so if you, you know... Like, Darkness definitely let, lets you be creative. So, that was a thumbs up, sorry. So, uh, rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.